When I discovered the idea of continuous learning, I thought it was a miracle. I came from a poor home where we never had any money. When I left school without graduating, my first job was washing dishes in the back of a small hotel. When I lost that job, I got a job washing cars in the wintertime, you know what that's like. When I lost that job, I got a job washing floors with a janitorial service, and I thought washing was in my future. So, I traveled and worked on farms, in construction, at laboring jobs, digging wells, in factories stacking lumber, on a ship in the North Atlantic, and at various other laboring jobs until I was 23 years old. And when I could no longer get a laboring job, like many people here, I got a job in sales. And in sales, I was a complete failure because I had no training. So, for six months, I worked and worked and worked, and I was making no success at all. I say starting off in sales with no skills is a wonderful weight loss program because if you don't sell, you don't eat, and I lost a lot of weight in those six months. Well, this whole thing about finding your passion is motivational claptrap. The way that you find your passion is whatever job you have to do, throw your whole heart into it. And this has been discovered for centuries. Throw your whole heart into what you're doing, and you'll find out very quickly if this is the right work for you. If it's not, you won't get any excitement or happiness from it, and something will change. Many people don't realize that until you throw your whole heart into something, you don't get anything back. And so, what they do is they say, well, I'll try this and see if it works. And if it does, I read this wonderful line two weeks ago, every so often I come across a great line. It said, this work is never fun until you're good at it. And so, when you begin at a job, it may take you a year or two of hard work to become good at what you're doing. And it becomes fun, then, it becomes your passion. And maybe we say, oh, find my passion, find my passion. No, do your job right. Do it really well and get really good at it. And if when you're really good at it, if you still don't enjoy it, then look for something else. Tap your creative potential. Accept the fact that every single human being is a genius, and all successful men and women are creative. They're creative in that they respond to their world differently. They ask questions, they're flexible, they're curious. You know what the hallmark of creativity is? Curiosity. The hallmark of ignorance and stupidity is the cessation or stopping from asking questions. I've worked with some of the brightest men and women in this nation, and I find that the smartest people of all, the ones that have the greatest education and the most experience, are the ones who ask the most questions. They ask questions almost as if they were children, but they never stop asking questions. They're very open and flexible, and they have the ability once they learn a new piece of information to drop what they're doing if the new information contradicts it and do something else. You know what most people do? Most people keep on doing what they're doing until they run to a wall, as they say. The more you do what you're doing, the more you'll get at what you've got. Someone reported out to me not long ago, and I think it's very true, is that all changes in our life come with the input of new information. That if we do not have new information, that if we do not have new information, we keep on doing the same thing forever as a result of inertia. And creative people are always looking for faster, better, easier, cheaper, newer ways to do things. Remember, 80% of everything that we are doing today, and are doing today in our general business, will be different five years from now. 80% of the products that we use, the food that we eat, the cars we drive, the music we listen to, the movies we go to, even the streets we drive on, 80% of everything will be new in five years. That's how rapidly things are changing. Warren Buffett spends 80% of his time studying every day, and he's one of the richest people in the history of the world because he keeps learning new things. When I came across continuous learning, almost like tripping over something in the dark, I couldn't believe it. What it said was that you can learn anything you need to learn to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. There are no limitations on what you could learn. You have more potential than that you could use in a hundred lifetimes. You can learn anything. This, to me, was the greatest of all discoveries. There are no limits on the kind of life you can have because you can learn anything you need to learn. As long as you continuously learn new things. And what's the magic formula? 10 hours a week. Read a little bit each day in your field. Listen to audio programs when you travel around. Go to seminars and take notes. Write down actions that you can take immediately afterwards. And just dedicate your life to becoming a student for the rest of your life. Every day, you should be learning something new. Learning should be as much a part of your life as eating, sleeping, and breathing. And if you'll do that, you start to go up the ladder of success faster and faster.
You feel happier and happier. People respect you and look up to you. You feel that you have more energy and your self-esteem goes up. Your self-image improves and you get it all from continuous learning, which is why these people go from the bottom to the top and they're very happy people. They're very highly respected and they feel wonderful about themselves because growing and becoming better in your field is one of the most happiest and wonderful things you can do. Here are the keys to continuous learning. First of all, read 60 minutes a day. I will say this over and over again, 60 minutes per day, over the course of a year, two years, three years, will make you one of the top people in your field. Listen to audio cassettes in your car. Listen to audio cassettes. Here's what most people don't realize. They don't realize that they're not on vacation when they're in their car. If they're traveling between calls and between clients or between customers, they're not on vacation when they get into their car. They're still working. And the worst thing you can do is turn your mind off and park it and listen to something that's chewing gum for the years. What you do when you're driving is you learn at the same time. Listen to audio programs in your car. Turn your car into a mobile classroom. Turn your car into a university on wheels. Now, a study at the University of California, USC, concluded that if you listen to educational audio programs in your car as you drive around, instead of listening to music, which we call chewing gum for the years, if you listen to audio programs, you'll get the equivalent of almost full-time university attendance. Except for one small point. When you go to the university, People have graduated from universities that I eventually did find that about 90 or 95 percent of what they teach you is not practical. It's theoretical, it's enjoyable, but it's useless in the real world. However, when you select educational audio programs on sales, communication, time management, goal setting for yourself, which you can stop and start if you like, you only select things that are valuable to you in the moment. So you get even more than a university education by turning your car into a classroom on wheels. You turn your car into a mobile learning machine. Human beings are very much like they have what is called a cybernetic guidance mechanism, like a guided missile. A guided missile is fired at the target, and even if the target moves, the missile takes feedback and adjusts its course and hits the target. You have a cybernetic mechanism where you are learning. You are a learning machine. The more activities you engage in, the faster you learn, and pretty soon, you become so smart that you can hit the target almost every time. You can learn new skills, but it's like a car. You cannot change a car's engine by changing the paint on the outside. You can learn new skills if you're ambitious and positive and you want to be more successful, and you're eager to learn and apply new ideas. There's no limit to what you can do, but your basic personality, that's like your eye color, it's like your height, it's even like your sex. You cannot change these. These are basic parts that are programmed into your personality. So don't try to change people. If people were lazy when they're young, they'll be lazy 50 years later. If people were dishonest, they'll be dishonest. If people were unorganized, they'll be unorganized. However, if they have good qualities, good ambitions, you can teach them all kinds of skills. Skills are very different from personality. Did you ever wonder, Ed, is that some people make far more in the world where some people can be making one, two, three, four, five, ten times as much as another person doing the same job? Many times, we see salespeople who are making 10 times as much as a person next to them in the next desk, selling the same product, the same product under the same price, under the same competitive circumstances. Why does this happen? Well, about 30 years ago, as you know, I began studying and looking for the reasons for success and failure. And one of the things that I found is that there are formulas, there are specific methods applied and used by very successful people. And if you use the same methods, law of cause and effect, you start to get the same result. And the more I study it, the more I realize this, that everybody who's at the front of the line once started at the back of the line. But everybody who's doing well was once doing poorly. Everybody who is first was once last. How did they get to be first? And it's very simple. It is called the law of incremental improvement, the law of continuous improvement. It's a very simple thing. You see, most of us, with no education, no knowledge, no skills, we go to school, we learn how to read and write and so on, we start our jobs and in our careers, we have the knowledge, we have no skills. Each time we start something new, we have to go back to the back of the line. Why do some people get to the front of the line? It's very simple, because they learn the things that the other people learn. Another one, 
It is really the way that every single person has gone from nothing to being successful is continuous learning. Continuous learning, I believe, is the most important single key to success. It's what makes America the greatest country in the world. Why? It's because you could come here with nothing and by simply focusing clearly on what you want and then finding out who else has gotten the same things you want and then learning from what they did and doing the same things over and over again, you'll eventually get the same result. In fact, the rule today is that continuous learning is the minimum requirement for success in a new field. Whatever field you're in today, if you do not engage in continuous learning the same way you brush your teeth every day, you take a shower every day, if you don't engage in continuous learning every day, what will happen is that you'll be passed by by the people who do. In America today, an incredible shift has taken place. The shift is between those who know more and those who know less. We no longer live in a physical economy. We live in a mental economy. We live in an economy where brain power is the critical tool for earning a great living. And continuous learning is the only way to continue building your brain power. Attend every seminar possible, get all the training you can, and of course, listen at every opportunity. You'll learn more in a few weeks watching this network than you might learn in years trying to pick it up by yourself. There's a rule that your television can make you rich or it can make you poor. It can make you rich if you turn it off, and it's made you poor if you turn it on. Years of research, this is my subject, shows that the more you watch television, the lower your income, unless you watch television, the higher your income. And it's always a choice you make, anyway. So, two hours a night would work out to about a book a week, plus other things. And then during the day, practice the things you learn. And pretty soon, you move on to the fast track. Pretty soon, you start to move ahead of everybody else in your career. Pretty soon, you start to become much more valuable, your earning ability goes up. So, I want you to think of a ladder of success and imagine a ladder. And each run on the ladder is a new skill. The rule is you cannot achieve a new goal without learning a new skill. So, each one is a new skill. Each time you master a skill, you move up the ladder and your income goes up. And then you learn a new skill. And this is what they would do. They would work for a month or three months or a year, however long it took to become excellent in a single skill. They would not try to become excellent in multiple skills, just one skill. And then once they had mastered that skill and people said, you know, you're pretty good at that. That would be their signal. Now, what's my next skill? And they would work on the next skill, take the next step and the next step. And they would just keep climbing the ladder of success. Now, if ever you stop climbing the ladder, do you know what happens? You level off and then you begin to decline because your existing skills become obsolete at a faster rate today than ever before. So, you keep climbing the ladder. If you stop, other people who are climbing their ladders will go past you and pretty soon, you'll fall so far behind. It's like you're in a marathon. Let's say you're in a marathon with lots of runners and you decide, well, you're going to stop and you're just going to stroll for a while. You're just going to stroll for a while. You're just going to rest. You don't want to work too hard. And then you decide, well, I think I'll start running again. What happens? You never catch up because the other people just kept on running. They're so far ahead of you, you never catch up. Now, these seem like very simple explanations, but they do describe success versus failure. Now, here's the interesting thing. Life is very much like a marathon. We all start off with the same line. We're all ready to go, and we start running. Everybody's got pretty much the same abilities and the same opportunities. We go to the same schools, we go to the same colleges. And yet, some people get way, way ahead. The masses stay in the middle, and some people fall so far behind, they think they're first. And so, why is this? Well, this has been studied for year after year, and we find this one single difference. It's the way you think. I was listening to somebody who grew up in a small town, and he was talking about this interesting point. He said he came from a poor family, and there were three families in that town that owned everything. They owned the mill, and they owned the factory, and they owned the general store, and they owned the shipping, and they owned the trucking, and they owned the agricultural processing, they owned everything. And these three families were rich. They had beautiful homes. Everybody revered them and talked about them. They were on the bank boards and everything else. And he went to school with the kids from these three families. And you know, everybody wanted to be their friends, of course. You remember those days. And he found they're quite normal kids. They weren't very different from anybody else. But somehow, these families owned everything. And it was a real shock to him. 
It wasn't their education because they weren't getting a better education than he was. It wasn't their graves because the graves were the same. It certainly wasn't their physical attractions or anything else. It was just one thing, if they thought differently. They had an attitude of looking for opportunities and possibilities. And what we have found in a series of articles in Inc. Magazine, they were interviewing people who'd become fabulously successful, rags to riches stories. Every one of them said the only reason I succeeded is because I developed the habit of always looking for the opportunity, always looking for something good or positive in what I was doing. Whereas other people, they have a setback. Oh, my God. And they go home and drink and watch television and so on. But successful people are always looking for the opportunity. They think differently. So, when you learn to think better, you make better decisions, you get better results. The law of cause and effect says that for every effect in your life, there's a cause. Everything happens for a reason, even if you don't know the reason, there's a reason. If somebody's practice is twice as large as somebody else's practice, it's not because of you or your genetics or your DNA or your chromosomes or anything else. It's just because they're doing something different, that's all. So, what you do is if you can define the effect that you want in your life, and then what you do is you trace it back to someone who at one time was earning less than you and who's now earning twice as much, and then you find out what they did. You come here and you ask Ed and his people, and they'll tell you. And then you do the same thing. You see, success leaves tracks, leaves tracks. You just do the same thing, and you get to the same place, which brings us to one of the great rules of success. If you do what other successful people do over and over again until it becomes a habit, nothing in the world can stop you from getting the same results that they do. And if you don't, nothing can help you. Now, this is a very important point to understand. All success skills are learnable. All practice development and management skills are learnable skills. All sales skills are learnable. All public relations skills are learnable. They're all physical and mental skills are learnable. You may not be able to play a classical violin or dunk baskets like Michael Jordan, but all business and sales and management skills are learnable skills. And so therefore, you can learn any skill you need to learn in order to achieve any goal that you want. And once you understand that, for me, that happened to me when I was 23. The dam broke when I learned this law of cause and effect, leave it. My God, you could learn to be successful. So, I'm going to teach you a go-forward word, and this is the word that you're going to use for the rest of your career. This is the word that will guarantee that you'll get onto the fast track in life. You'll increase your income at a more rapid rate than the average person, and you'll take complete control of your life. And the word is, cow. You want to double your income? The only question you ask is, cow. You want to double the number of patients coming to your practice? Your question is, cow. You want to double your profitability? The question is, how? Your question is, how to solve a problem? The question is, how? Now, whenever you ask the question, how, it's like stepping on the accelerator of your own creative mind. You step in, and it throws off ideas like those little lightning strikes in the cartoons or the light bulbs, and every idea is for an action that you can take right now. Whenever you ask the question, how, you get ideas. And the interesting thing is they did a study at Harvard. They found that the greatest single predictor of success, especially financial success in life, is creativity. And creativity is determined by the number of ideas you come up with. And you'll find that the more ideas you come up with, because of the law of probabilities, the more likely it is you come up with a great idea. No matter what has happened in the past, the future is unlimited. It's only limited by your imagination. And here are my three predictions for you. Number one. You're going to make more money in the future than you have ever made in your life before. The financial possibilities for you in the future are unlimited. Number two, you're going to have greater happiness and success in the future than you have ever had in your life today. And number three, your greatest achievements in life lie in the future. And the future is limited only by your own imagination. So, there is no limit to what you can be and do in the future. Thank you. Imagine standing at the edge of a vast ocean. Your eyes fixed on the horizon where the sky kisses the water. The expanse before you is daunting. Within you stirs a sense of adventure, a yearning to set sail and explore the boundless possibilities that lie beyond. This ocean is not just a body of water. It's a metaphor for life itself, vast, unpredictable, and brimming with opportunities. Each one of us stands on this shore, contemplating our journey, our goals, and the path we will choose to reach them. Now, think back to a moment in your life when you were faced with a decision that seemed insurmountable, 
a challenge so daunting that the mere thought of it made your heart race. Remember the feeling of uncertainty, the whispers of doubt that echoed in your mind. There was also a glimmer of hope, a faint light in the darkness that urged you to take that first step, to believe in the possibility of success despite the fears and obstacles that lay ahead. Through this journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, a step fueled not by certainty but by the courage to pursue what matters most to you. It's about setting sail from the safety of the shore and embracing the winds of change, allowing them to guide you towards your dreams. It's about navigating through storms with resilience, knowing that each wave you conquer brings you closer to your destination. But how do we chart this course? How do we transform the visible ink of our aspirations into a map that leads to success? It begins with a vision, a clear and compelling picture of what we aim to achieve. This vision serves as a beacon, guiding us through the darkest nights and the roughest seas. It reminds us of why we embarked on this journey in the first place and keeps our spirits high when the waters get rough. To create this vision, we must dare to dream big. We must imagine our ideal life in vivid detail. The kind of life that makes us leap out of bed in the morning, burning with passion and purpose. Ask yourself, what does this life look like? What are you doing? Who are you with? And how do you feel? Let these questions be the wind in your sails, propelling you forward with clarity and conviction. As we stand on the shore, gazing at the horizon, remember that the ocean of life is waiting for us to explore. It's time to raise our sails and embark on this journey with courage and determination. Chart our course with confidence, knowing that while the seas may be unpredictable, our resolve to reach our destination is unwavering. And so, as we set sail towards our dreams, hold on to that initial spark of courage that prompted us to embark on this journey. Let it remind us that within each of us lies the power to overcome any obstacle, to reach any shore we set our sights on. With our vision as our guide and our determination as our companion, there is no limit to what we can achieve. Now, take that first step together into the vast ocean of possibilities that awaits, navigating the currents of change and steering through the storms of life. It's the stars above our goals that guide us. They light our path, providing direction and purpose in the otherwise overwhelming darkness. The power of goal setting cannot be understated. It is the very essence of our journey, transforming the intangible into the tangible, dreams into reality. Think of your life as a grand voyage, a masterpiece waiting to be painted. Each stroke of the brush, every choice and action, contributes to the final picture. Without a clear vision of what you wish to paint, your actions might seem random, scattered, lacking coherence and beauty. But when you have a clear, vivid image in mind, each stroke becomes deliberate, purposeful, contributing to the realization of your masterpiece. This is the essence of goal setting. It gives purpose and direction to the otherwise random brush strokes of our daily lives. Imagine now a ship setting sail without a destination. It drifts aimlessly at the mercy of the winds and currents, with no sense of direction or purpose. This is akin to a life without goals. Just as a ship's captain charts a course to reach a desired destination, so must we set specific, meaningful goals to give direction to our lives. These goals act as our North Star, guiding us through life's challenges and helping us stay on course, no matter the weather. But how do we set these goals? It begins with the courage to dream, to look deep within and ask ourselves what we truly desire. It requires us to be honest and bold, to acknowledge our deepest aspirations without fear or limitation. Think about what excites you, what stirs your soul and sets your heart ablaze. These are the seeds from which your goals will grow. Once you've identified these dreams, it's time to give them form, to transform them from mere wishes into concrete goals. This requires specificity and clarity. Instead of a vague desire to be successful, define what success means to you. Is it to start your own business, to write a book, to travel the world? Whatever it is, describe it in vivid detail, as if painting a picture with words. Then, break down this grand vision into smaller, achievable goals, steps that you can take to gradually make your dream a reality. But setting goals is only the beginning. The true power lies in taking action, in setting sail towards your North Star. This requires commitment, discipline, and resilience. There will be days when the winds are against you, when the storms rage with such ferocity that you might consider turning back. In these moments, remember why you set out on this journey in the first place. Hold fast to your goals, for they are the beacon that guides you through the darkest nights. As we set our sights on the horizon, embrace the power of goal setting. 
Let it be the compass that guides us, the map that shows us the way. With each goal we set and each step we take towards it, we are not only moving closer to our dreams but also becoming the person capable of achieving them. This is the true power of goal setting, it shapes us, molds us into our best selves, ready to meet the challenges and seize the opportunities that lie ahead. So, chart our course with confidence, guided by the stars of our goals. Navigate the vast ocean of possibilities with determination, courage, and an unwavering belief in our ability to reach our destination. For in the journey of life, it is not just the reaching of our goals that matters, but who we become in the process. Now, as we continue on this voyage, turn our attention to the winds of change, to the continuous process of learning and growth that propels us forward, ever closer to the shores of our dreams. As we navigate towards our dreams, guided by the stars of our goals, we find ourselves propelled by a force as constant as the wind, the desire for continuous learning. Just as a ship's sails catch the wind to move forward, our minds grasp new knowledge, new skills, driving us towards our destination. This voyage is not just about reaching a place on a map. It's about the transformation we undergo, the person we become in the process. Consider for a moment the greatest explorers of history, those who charted unknown territories and expanded our understanding of the world. They didn't achieve their feats by standing still. No, they were propelled by an insatiable curiosity, a relentless pursuit of knowledge. In much the same way, our personal and professional lives demand of us a commitment to continuous learning. The landscape of life is ever-changing, with new challenges and opportunities arising like waves on the ocean surface. To navigate these waters successfully, we must become lifelong learners, constantly expanding our horizons and adapting to the shifting tide. But what does it mean to embrace continuous learning? It's more than just accumulating facts or mastering new skills. It's about fostering a mindset of growth, understanding that every experience, every challenge, every failure is an opportunity to learn and improve. It's about looking at the world with wonder and curiosity, asking questions, seeking answers, and never settling for the status quo. Imagine setting sail on a voyage without a map or compass, relying solely on the stars and your instincts to guide you. The journey would be fraught with uncertainty but also with infinite possibilities for discovery. This is the essence of continuous learning, setting out on a path of self-discovery, armed with the knowledge that the journey itself is the destination. Along the way, we gather insights and wisdom like treasures, each one contributing to our growth and development. To truly embrace continuous learning, we must cultivate a love for reading. Books are like treasure maps, leading us to new insights and understanding. They challenge our perspectives, introduce us to new ideas, and inspire us to think differently. By dedicating time each day to read, we open ourselves to a world of knowledge, allowing us to learn from the greatest minds and thinkers throughout history. But learning is not a solitary endeavor. It thrives in the company of others, in the exchange of ideas and the sharing of experiences. Seek out mentors and role models, individuals who have charted their own courses and achieved the goals you aspire to. Engage in conversations, ask questions, listen deeply. Each person you meet is a repository of knowledge, a potential guide on your journey. And let us not forget the power of experience as a teacher. The challenges we face, the obstacles we overcome, provide some of the most valuable lessons. Embrace these experiences, reflect on them, and extract the wisdom they offer. Remember, it is often through our failures that we learn the most about ourselves and the world around us. So remain open to new experiences, willing to step out of your comfort zones and try new things. Be adaptable, ready to adjust your sails when the winds change direction. For it is in these moments of uncertainty and challenge that we grow the most, that we discover what we are truly capable of. So as we chart our course through the vast ocean of life, let us do so with a commitment to continuous learning. Let it be the wind that fills our sails, propelling us towards our dreams. Embrace every opportunity to learn, to grow, to become the best versions of ourselves. For in the end, it is not just the destination that matters, but the person we become on the journey. And now, as we embrace the winds of continuous learning, let us also prepare for the storms and challenges that lie ahead. For it is through facing these challenges, through demonstrating resilience and the ability to overcome obstacles, that our commitment to continuous learning is truly tested. Let us navigate these waters with courage, Drawing upon the knowledge and wisdom we have gathered to steer us through the roughest seas, ever closer to the shores of our dreams. 
Embracing the winds of continuous learning, we are inevitably met by the tempest of challenges and setbacks. It's in these moments when the seas roar and the skies darken that the essence of our voyage is truly tested. Cultivating resilience and overcoming obstacles isn't merely about weathering storms. It's about learning to dance in the rain, finding strength in adversity, and emerging from the tempest stronger and more determined than before. Imagine for a moment a tree standing tall and proud in the forest. Over the years, it faces countless storms. With each gust of wind, the tree bends but does not break. It adapts, growing stronger at the breaks, its roots delving deeper into the earth. Much like each of us embodies resilience, it doesn't merely survive the storms. It uses them as opportunities to grow stronger, to fortify itself for the challenges ahead. In our lives, obstacles and setbacks are not detours on the journey, they are the journey. They shape us, test us, and ultimately reveal to us the strength we didn't know we possessed. Think back to a time in your life when you faced a challenge that seemed insurmountable. Perhaps it was a failure, a disappointment, or a loss. In that moment, it may have felt like the storm would never pass. Yet here you stand today, stronger and wiser for having navigated through it. This is the essence of resilience. The ability to face adversity head-on and emerge not just unscathed, but stronger and wiser for the experience. But how do we cultivate this resilience? It begins with a shift in perspective. Instead of viewing obstacles as insurmountable barriers, we can choose to see them as stepping stones, opportunities to learn, grow, and develop. This doesn't mean that we ignore the pain or difficulty of these challenges. Rather, it means we acknowledge them, feel them fully, and then ask ourselves, what can I learn from this? How can this make me stronger? To build resilience, we must also embrace the power of positivity. This doesn't mean wearing rose-colored glasses or denying the reality of our situation. It means choosing to focus on what we can control, finding gratitude even in the darkest moments, and keeping our eyes fixed on our goals, on the horizon of our dreams. It's about telling ourselves, this too shall pass, and believing with every fiber of our being that we have the strength to overcome whatever lies ahead. Another key to cultivating resilience is to build a support network of friends, family, and mentors who can offer encouragement, wisdom, and a listening ear when the going gets tough. These are the people who remind us of our strength when we've forgotten, who stand by us through thick and thin, and who celebrate with us when we emerge victorious. They are the lifelines that help us navigate through the stormy seas. Remember that resilience is not something we are born with. It is something we build day by day, challenge by challenge. It requires courage, determination, and the unwavering belief in our ability to persevere. But most importantly, it requires action. We must take deliberate steps, however small, towards our goals, even when the winds of doubt and fear howl around us. So as we continue to navigate the vast ocean of life, let us do so with resilience as our compass. Let us embrace each obstacle as an opportunity to grow, each setback as a lesson in strength, and each failure as a stepping stone toward success. For it is in the moments of struggle that we discover the true depth of our courage, the resilience of our spirit, and the boundless potential within us to overcome any obstacle. And now, as we cultivate resilience and learn to overcome the obstacles in our path, let us also remember the importance of the company we keep. Surrounding ourselves with the right people can not only provide the support and encouragement we need to persevere, but also inspire us to reach even greater heights. As we chart our course through the tumultuous seas of life, cultivating resilience and learning to dance in the storm, there's a beacon of light that often goes unnoticed. Yet its importance cannot be overstated. This beacon is the company we keep, the people we choose to surround ourselves with. Just as a ship relies on a lighthouse to warn it of danger and guide it to safety, so too do we rely on our relationships to illuminate our path, offering support, guidance, and encouragement as we navigate through life's challenges. Consider for a moment the people in your life. Think about those who lift you up, who inspire you to be your best self, who believe in you even when you doubt yourself. These individuals are more than just friends or family. They are the crew of your ship, working alongside you, hoping you steer towards your dreams. They are the ones who, with a word of encouragement or a gesture of support, can make the darkest night seem like the break of dawn. But just as there are lighthouses, there are also sirens, those whose negativity and pessimism can lead us astray, tempting us to veer off course and crash upon the rocks. These individuals drain our energy, dampen our spirits, and cloud our vision. 
The importance of distinguishing between these two types of people cannot be overstated, for just as the right company can elevate us to heights we never imagined, the wrong company can pull us down into the depths. Surrounding yourself with the right people is not a matter of chance. It's a choice, a deliberate decision to seek out those who share your values, your dreams, and your determination. It's about building a network of mentors, peers, and friends who challenge you, who push you to grow, and who celebrate your successes as if they were their own. These relationships are the treasures of life, more valuable than gold, for they enrich our journey in ways material wealth never could. But how do we find these individuals, these beacons of light in the fog of our daily lives? It starts with being the kind of person you want to attract. Like attracts like, after all, by embodying the qualities you seek in others, kindness, positivity, ambition. You become a magnet, drawing like-minded individuals towards you. It's about being intentional in your interactions, seeking out opportunities to connect with others who inspire you, whether through networking events, community activities, or shared interests. Remember, the company we keep is a reflection of who we are and who we aspire to be. Be mindful of the people we allow into our lives. Seek out those who shine brightly, who guide us through the storm, and who remind us of the boundless potential within each of us. For in the journey of life, it is not just our resilience or our determination that carries us forward. It is the strength we draw from those around us, the collective power of our shared dreams and aspirations. And now, as we understand the importance of surrounding ourselves with the right people, let us also recognize the role we play in our own journey. Our success, our happiness, and our fulfillment are not solely determined by external factors but by our internal compass, our attitudes, and our choices. Take control of our destiny, embracing the power within us to shape our future. Guided by the stars of our goals, in the light of those we choose to journey with, as we stand upon the threshold of tomorrow, gazing out across the vast, uncharted waters of our futures, we carry with us the lessons learned from the voyage thus far. Our journey, marked by the setting of goals as bright as the stars in the night sky, propelled forward by the winds of continuous learning, strengthened through the storms by our resilience, and guided by the beacons of those we choose to surround ourselves with, has brought us to this moment. A moment of reflection, of understanding, and of anticipation for what lies ahead. We have discovered that setting our sights on the horizon, on the dreams that stir our souls and ignite our passions, is the first step in a journey of a thousand miles. It is these goals that give us direction, purpose, and a sense of meaning in the ocean of life. They are the stars by which we navigate, guiding us through calm and turbulent seas alike. But these goals are not static. They evolve as we do, growing and changing as we journey forward, learning and adapting to the world around us. Our voyage has taught us the importance of embracing continuous learning, of remaining ever curious and hungry for knowledge. In a world that is constantly changing, where the winds of technology, society, and economy shift with swift unpredictability, our ability to learn, to grow, and to adapt is our greatest asset. It is what ensures that we are not left to drift, but instead are always moving forward, sails billowed with the winds of progress. But as we have learned, the journey is not always smooth. We will face storms of doubt, fear, and failure. It is in these moments that our resilience is tested, that our true strength is forged, like the mighty oak that stands stronger for having weathered the storm. We emerge from our challenges with a deeper understanding of our capabilities, a firmer belief in our worth, and a greater resolve to achieve our dreams. And yet, we do not journey alone. The people we choose to bring aboard our ship, to share in our voyage, play a crucial role in our journey. They are our crew, our navigators, our confidants, and our friends. They inspire us, challenge us, support us, and celebrate with us. They remind us of our course when we lose sight of our stars and offer a safe harbor when the seas grow rough. Our success, our happiness, and indeed the very quality of our journey are inextricably linked to those with whom we choose to share it. As we bring all these elements together, our goals, our continuous learning, our resilience, and our companions, we begin to see the outline of the map of our journey. It is a map that is uniquely ours, marked by our dreams, our challenges, our victories, and our relationships. It is a map that leads not to a final destination but to a continuous journey of growth, discovery, and fulfillment. So as we look to the horizon, let us do so with hearts full of hope, minds eager for learning, spirits resilient in the face of challenge, and souls enriched by the company we keep. Let us set sail from the shores of the known into the vast expanse of possibility, 
armed with the knowledge that the journey itself is the greatest destination. And as we journey, let us remember that each day is a new opportunity to learn, to grow, to overcome, and to connect. In this voyage of life, there are no limits to what we can achieve, no horizons too distant to reach, provided we set our goals high, commit to lifelong learning, cultivate our resilience, and surround ourselves with the right people. The journey ahead of us is ours to shape, with every step taken, every challenge faced, and every relationship built, weaving the rich tapestry of our lives. Embark on this journey with courage, determination, and an unwavering belief in the boundless potential within each of us. Together, let us navigate the vast ocean of life, peering towards our dreams, powered by our passions, and guided by the light of our highest aspirations. Today, we're going to delve into what I believe to be one of life's most pivotal discoveries, the principle of excellence. Simply put, your true success in life only begins when you commit to excelling in your endeavors. Without this commitment, you'll always operate at subpar levels, never realizing your full potential. Extensive studies of high achievers consistently demonstrate that greatness is achievable only when you become exceptional in your chosen field. Dr. Shirley Brack's 20-year study on self-made millionaires revealed key qualities that set them apart. Firstly, they specialized early in their careers, pursuing what they enjoyed and mastering it. This absorption in their work led to remarkable success, often unnoticed until they amassed significant wealth. Moreover, they were prudent with their earnings, avoiding risky ventures and steadily growing their wealth over time. The Pareto Principle underscores this phenomenon, stating that 80% of results stem from 20% of efforts. This applies to sales as well, where the top performers invest in becoming excellent rather than relying on luck or shortcuts. IBM's enduring slogan, at IBM, we mean service, exemplifies how companies establish excellence as their competitive edge, fostering customer trust and loyalty. Satisfaction and complacency are the enemies of excellence. Many settle for mediocrity, unaware of their potential for greatness. True happiness and security stem from knowing you excel at something meaningful. To achieve excellence, commit to becoming excellent in something you love and are passionate about. Dedicate at least one hour daily to improving in your field through study and practice. Believe in the importance of your work and its impact. Love what you do, and let that passion drive your pursuit of excellence. Continuous improvement and seeking advice from experts are vital for sustained success. Winners support others on their journey to excellence, sharing insights and resources. Remember, excellence is a journey, not a destination. Embrace it wholeheartedly and let it guide you to a fulfilling and prosperous career.